Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my opinions regarding Path of Exile 2. Now over the weekend at ExileCon, um, they basically shared all the information, the development progress of the game, and there's a bit of controversy over parts of it. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about that and get your guys' opinion on it. So for those of you guys who don't know, Path of Exile 2 uh, in the past, so four years ago, when they started kind of teasing information about Path of Exile 2, they basically said that PoE 2 is sort of going to be like a continuation of PoE. So what that means is um, the systems coming to Path of Exile 2 would basically impact Path of Exile. Now, one of the big things about this was the gem overhaul, the, the, the socket overhaul on your gear. So, for example, when you are leveling in Path of Exile and you find a pair of gloves that have, you know attack speed life and resistance and you want to switch out for your current gloves sometimes you're unable to because your current gloves maybe has your you know righteous fire linked with elemental focus and burning damage poe 2 really changes that entire system because instead of you having the uh, sockets on your gear along with the colors on your gear itself they are tied to the gems which means you can very easily swap gear when you actually get replacements right so a lot of people are very unhappy with with that however Moving forward, this means that they can make very big changes to Path of Exile 2 without it directly affecting Path of Exile since they are not going to be connected in that nature. Now, there's a lot of things to cover and I can't possibly cover everything, but when I say that they are not connected, they are still connected by engine, I believe, meaning all of your cosmetics you have for the most part will apply to PoE 2 along with your stash tabs and things like that, but certain aspects of the games will not be connected in, in that regard, right? So anyway, with that being uh, said, let's go ahead and talk about um, a few features of Path of Exile 2, um, some, of the, some of the big ones to highlight. So in Path of Exile 2, um, I believe Jonathan Rogers was talking about how you can have, I think that's his name actually, sorry, that's not actually his name. Um, you can have nine six links in the game. Now at first glance, a lot of people say nine six links, that sounds really cool, but do I really want to be pressing nine buttons in Path of Exile? That's like not reality that a lot of people want and I completely understand that thankfully they explained that no not every build is going to be button mashing nine keybinds more or less you're not even going to be mashing four keybinds a lot of the time um, the purpose of having all of these different uh, skills is for situational combat right now of course you're still going to have an aura which is actually now tied to spirit which I actually forgot we'll have to uh, talk about that one but more so, uh, PoE2 is going to be um, slower paced in its gameplay, but will still be able to go quicker. And the purpose of having the, the different skills, again, was like I was saying, for situational combat. In current iteration of Path of Exile, you pretty much usually will run one or two skills and blow everything up with, you know, very little resistance. And if there is anything that is, you know, trying to fight you, you pretty much just hit it harder, right? PoE2, they're trying to potentially take a step back from that uh, and, and we'll cover more of that in a little bit. So, <clears throat> one of the other things is that support gems have their own additive attribute requirement uh, for your main skill. And most support gems actually do not necessarily have a damage modifier on them. They simply change the skill mechanically, right? So, this is an interesting topic because... In current PoE, you pretty much just stack support gems for damage multipliers, right? So if we use Righteous Fire, for example, you would have Righteous Fire, Burning Damage, that's a multiplier, Efficacy, that's a damage multiplier, right? Elemental Focus, that's a damage multiplier, Swift Affliction, Life, you get the point, right? So the um, PoE 2 is pushing more into support gems, granting you utility uh, or changing it. Now, I'm curious how that works because I would imagine it's still your primary goal to get you know, a six link on all of your your main skills. Um, so I'm really curious how that ends up playing out. I have no idea, right? Like how many ways could you possibly augment certain skills since they don't have a damage penalty or sorry, since you're not getting direct damage through the support gem. So this still has a lot of work to be done, I'm sure. So I'm, I'm very curious how they kind of handle that because like how many ways can you augment a skill, right? You know what I'm saying? Like for a projectile, I could see getting multiple projectiles, having it travel faster, having it travel slower, maybe applying an ailment, proccing stuff on ailment. We've seen a few things like that. Now, the other regards to support gems have an additive attribute requirement. This is very interesting. So in current PoE, right, we have, say, uh, added cold, right? Say you want to use added cold on Flicker Strike. 
Added Cold is a green gem, so it has a dexterity requirement. So as long as you hit that requirement, you can utilize that support gem and you can go ahead and level it up, right? Well, in PoE 2, they're changing how that works. Instead, um, they're making it so all the support gems add together. So a prime example would be if you're using Freezing Pulse with faster attacks, I know that doesn't work, and faster projectiles, and they both take 30 dex, your Freeze Pulse will now require 60 dexterity. I have no clue how this is going to be in the end. Um, in, in current PoE, that would be weird. But remember, it's really hard to compare things in current Path of Exile to Path of Exile 2 because they are truly going to change how a lot of mechanics work. At first glance, if you think of this like PoE 1, the changes don't necessarily sound very possible. But I mean, again, completely different games. So something I am just more so curious about, right? Um, in Path of Exile 2, there is going to be a dodge roll. Dodge roll is um, for every single character, and I'm guessing the purpose of the dodge roll is primarily for animation canceling and dodging attacks. I don't expect every single player to always have the dodge roll 24-7, but I more so expect it to be a utility for not getting yourself blocked all the time. So prime example, you come across a boss and you see him winding his hand up and you're throwing a fire trap, you could cancel out of your fire trap and sort of roll around the boss. They specifically said that the roll itself has like anti-stick mechanics where it kind of glides along the terrain. We did see some issues where people were getting stuck, but that's more so the purpose of it. Now, they did also say that movement skills are in Path of Exile. For example, you can see someone, or Nugi here, does use Leap Slam, um, but they said that it, it's not going to be like you have to spam your mobility skill to get around everywhere, right? This is definitely very different from the current Path of Exile we play, and I think that if done correctly, that's totally fine. So what I mean by that is, if the maps are maybe smaller or monsters are closer together, so there's not a lot of just traveling for no reason and no backtracking, I think that this could be a totally fine mechanic, right? Again, in current iteration of PoE, that would be very, very weird. They did also say that the dodge roll scales with your movement speed to an extent, so it's not like it's going to be a fixed amount of speed. You will actually, you know, scale with it. So that's pretty nice. Auras are going to be bound via... Sorry, not bound. Auras are now going to work on a mechanic called Spirit. So instead of you reserving your mana pool, I believe right above the MP pool, right here, there's like this little white line, and that's actually your Spirit. So I think Nugi right here has Herald of Ash on, and you can see it's reserving majority of the spirit and you can acquire more spirit via side quests um and i think scepters they said scepters specifically can roll spirit so i'm curious how that works as well right uh, especially because an aura to my knowledge would take up a skill slot so what if you have like five auras that's taking up five of your nine skills right that's pretty interesting i'm curious how that works i know a lot of people hate the current system of reserving mana I don't mind it too much, but I think it's just because I'm used to it. So I'm very biased, right? I don't really think that's necessarily fair for me to say. Um, really curious how that works to have a dedicated resource designed for, you know, your auras. Now, some really big ones that are <laughs> really, uh, let's just say, let's say negative. But again, I'm open-minded. You know, I'm really curious to see how everything plays out. In PoE 2, there will be no crafting bench, no orb of scour, no Quicksilver Flask, and also no Orb of Alterations. Furthermore, I know for a fact the Chaos Orb is completely redone, and a Chaos Orb is actually an Annul Exalt. So what that means is it removes a modifier and then adds one back. So we're really getting a different game when it comes to Path of Exile 2, uh, which again, to me, is so interesting. So again, if we, if we sort of dial this back, actually, one more thing to talk about. There is, and again, there's an infinite amount of things to cover. I'm missing so many, but there's only so much I can remember off the top of my head uh, and in my notes here. We're also going to be getting a weapon swap feature. Now, in current iteration of PoE, weapon swap is kind of clunky. Like, let's all be real. 99% of us don't use weapon swap. The 1% of us who use it are probably doing it for Rampage to you. Weapon swap to, uh, I forgot what it's called, but Sinvictas, I think it is, to like trigger Rampage, and then you swap back and you go. Huey 2 will have this really cool system of weapon swapping where you can allocate, I believe, around 10 points on the tree to your secondary weapon, so it doesn't conflict with your normal skill points. And then you can assign skills to be used with a specific weapon. 
So let's use an example. After a bit of a, after playing oh my, for a how bit, did that feel... happen? That was that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so say you are playing a uh, let's just hypothetically um, like an elementalist, and you know majority of your damage is like elemental type damage, and maybe you have ten points allocated to about cold damage. They also said the PUE two passive tree will have a lot less um, specific nodes and more generic nodes. So I think they said they have like one axe wheel or two axe wheels, right? To prevent people from specking too heavy into one specific thing so you you can actually benefit from the weapon swap system. So anyway, talking a little further. Say you're playing some type of elementalist and uh, arc is your main skill, right? But say you also have a separate weapon. So you have two weapons. One of them would be cold based and one of them would be lightning based. Well, you're primarily going to be clearing with your lightning skill. Like let's say 95% of the time. But maybe you come across a rare monster who is like, lightning resistant, I don't know, some other form of lightning resistance and God knows whatever else, right? They also said that, Do it this so right here, oh, it's, oh, I just missed it. Is he gonna hover? There we go. So right here, you see this little, little symbol. This basically means the monster is cold resistant. We have that in the current iteration of PoE right now, but they said in PoE 2, monsters will naturally have some form of resistance and bosses as well. So this actually would promote you to have two elements but you're not going too far out of your way to specialize in the other element, right? You simply have another weapon for it, which could could even just be maybe like a blue weapon or nothing crazy, right? And you come across a monster who is crazy resistant. So in Path of Exile 1 right now, for all of us Rarch's Fire players, we would come across the stupid Arc Nemesis mod, which is the Giga Fire and Ignite resistance. We could just use our other skill, which is on our bar. So instead of Fire Trap, maybe we have, let's say, Ice Nova, right? When you click Ice Nova, your character will automatically swap to the other weapon and your skill tree will automatically switch to the weapon set, which means that it will allocate those 10 other nodes you put in. And then, you know, whenever you switch back, it will switch back your weapon with like a one second delay or something. This is actually one of the smartest systems for weapon swapping I have ever seen. And it sounds really cool to me. At, at first, the second they said weapon swap, I was immediately off put because I think of the current, you know, system of weapon swapping and it is not very fun, but this is such a interesting way to incorporate it. I'm really, really excited to see what we can do with this stuff, right? Having maybe even a dedicated AOE skill and a dedicated single target. Very, very curious to see where they go with this. Another thing I wanted to talk about, and I think this is actually what the whole point of the video was, and then I kind of got lost in the notes, is going back to the original design of PoE 2 and splitting the games from PoE 1 and PoE 2. I always used to watch people play video games like uh, Diablo 2, for example. You know, I would watch other content creators play Diablo 2 and watch them do like, I don't know what it is, Bale runs or Mephisto runs, I'm not really sure. And, you know, they're playing on their Magic Find Sork and they teleport, 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 kill the boss, reset, do it all over again. And to me, I could do that for about four hours and then I would just get bored out of my mind because I'm not used to playing Diablo 2 like that, right? I, I didn't play much Diablo 2 growing up, so... It was not really something that I was super, super interested in. I have played so many different ARPGs across the years, especially of learning. I mean, I could just name a few of them. Torchlight 2, modded Torchlight 2, Synergies mod, a little bit of Diablo 2, Diablo 3, Diablo 4, a lot of modded Diablo 2, Grim Dawn, um, Last Epoch, Van Helsing series, uh, and it just goes on and on with, with the list of all the different ARPGs, right? Wolsen. None of them have really captured my interest like Path of Exile. Some of them will hold me on for a little bit, like Grim Dawn and modded Grim Dawn was a lot of fun. Modded uh, modded uh, Diablo 2 was very fun, like Path of Diablo and stuff like that, or I think Pro Project Diablo 2, sorry. But ultimately, I always just come back to PoE as my main game because of the layered complexity and near infinite content and... Even though there's so many different builds to play, and I know most of you guys know me for Righteous Fire, it doesn't matter because every time I play through the game, I end up with a different type of character, right? So, that being said, I'm very happy that PoE 2 is taking another direction because I don't want another game where I press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and just shield charge through a map. I've got Path of Exile for that. I really wanted to play just something different, but no other company can really hold me like GGG does. So I'm really freaking excited to play another Path of Exile that is pretty different, but yet still Path of Exile. It's still going to have the crazy complex skill tree. It's going to have, you know, I think they have nine new base classes or seven, eight new base. I forgot exactly how much, but there's so many classes coming out because each one of the new classes 
is going to have three subclasses within it, like the Ascendancy. So I know that there's like Monk, then Monk has three subclasses. There's Druid, uh, just Mercenary, so many different, so many crazy combinations of things uh, on top of what we know right now. So I am very, very excited. And I'm super happy that they're taking a different direction um, from regular Path of Exile. And, you know, I do have to say it sucks for the people who really wanted those updated features in PoE 1, specifically, again, the um, the gearing changes regarding the uh, sockets, right? But remember, PoE 1 is still going to be here and it's going to be updated alongside PoE 2 and they're even going to be staggering the releases. So what that means is that when a PoE 2 league comes out, we'll play it for like two months or so. And then within two months into the league, they're going to release their Path of Exile uh, expansion slash league. So then you can play that for two months and then you can go back to Path of Exile 2 and then switch back to PoE 1. Now, I know majority of people are not going to do that or if they do it, they're going to play for like a week or so. But again, someone like me who has went through the ARPG journey of playing all of these different games, none of them can hold me for more than like a week. So damn right, I am super excited to play a game that can hopefully hold me longer. That's not just the original Path of Exile 1, right? Now, some of the other features to talk about, um, they have made the game a lot more difficult in the sense of progression, I'll say. So prime example, I believe if you die on a boss, you get kicked out of the area. I don't know if you can go right back to the boss instantly, but um, the boss is full health. So in normal PoE, you have six portal meta, unless you're hardcore, of course. Six portal meta means, you know, you can die up to six times to the boss with most bosses, and then you're kicked out and that's it, right? I don't really like that system only because people kind of abuse it a little bit. I mean, it's not really abusing because it is current Path of Exile where, you know, if you're don't know a boss's mechanics you can just brute force it with damage and it dies and don't get me wrong there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing that way everyone likes to play games differently but sometimes i feel a little um i don't know the word for it i don't feel rewarded for playing a more tanky character right because in the end i could have just died three times and killed the boss in 25 seconds instead of playing an rf jug and just tanking it for two and a half minutes right and, and that's more of you you know a, you could say a personal problem there's nothing wrong with that but the biggest problem for me was I played Path of Exile Hardcore for about five years and it was so hard for me to play Softcore just because when I saw people doing these strategies, it just kind of like hurt me a little bit. I was like, well, you know, what's the point? What's the point of learning the boss mechanic when I could just zerg the boss down with six portals, right? Thankfully, I, you know, I found my own way of playing the game and I just play my Righteous Fire and I enjoy the game to its whole capacity in my own way. But again, I'm happy to see Path of Exile 2 take a different approach. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be that like crazy. Like you see these this footage right now of this gameplay. But this gameplay is with underpowered characters, very weak. God knows where their skill points are, right? They have no utility flasks. I, I, I probably not even ascended, right? At level 45, I think so. I would not say that the content we're watching now is really exactly what it is going to be, right? I mean, think of regular PoE if you've played it. If you've played regular Path of Exile, when Malachi first came out, I'm pretty sure I used 57 portals for my first Malachi kill. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, I'm dead serious, right? I'm pretty sure if, you know, um, I used a single portal now to refresh my flasks for fighting Malachi, Twitch chat would just make fun of me, right? So that's kind of a crazy how far we've gone since then, right? So don't be too alarmed with the gameplay footage you see now. Remember, everything is going to be different when we're actually playing the game, building our own characters, optimizing them. More importantly, optimizing them for how we want to play, right? Like you see the warrior right now that uh, Nugi is playing, and you can see that, you know, some of his attacks are very slow. Yeah, well, you know, in normal Path of Exile, if you were using a 0.9 attacks per second two-hander, right, with almost no attack speed on the tree, using some of the slowest skills in the game, it probably would feel somewhat similar, right? And that's not their fault. Well, that's not Nugi's fault. That's just the pre-made characters they've given us. Uh, remember that I do believe these showcases that they're demonstrating for us are not to show game balance. They're just to show what they have been working on so far, right? Game balance is probably not the biggest factor at this stage in the game. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Sorry if the video was a little bit long. I was kind of curious on, you know, what you guys think about the current PoE. Remember, if, if you're unhappy with the changes, we are allowed to politely disagree with each other. There is nothing wrong with that. 
I always try to maintain peace over the internet and it can be a really difficult thing sometimes. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, and I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow on the live stream. So thanks for watching, everybody. And don't forget, if you liked the video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pogs. See you guys all tomorrow.